Tonight, they've been called the mutant axe murderer versions of Sha Na Na. These are the Cadillac Tramps. Uh, Stan with the Punk Rock Chronicles. Who am I speaking with? Brian Coakley, Cadillac Tramps, Cadillac Hearse, Dos Clown, Antivirals. Can you talk a little bit about just the journey, how you guys got here? Yeah, I mean, how we really how we got here was once Gabby got to a certain place in his uh, when he was still alive and he was very ill. Jamie, the director, my you know my wife Jamie, we played with Tiger Army one night at the Grove over there in Anaheim, and she was like, "Gabby's so sick. We gotta we have to do this so that his son can see what he did, and we can just capture this this moment, you know, in time, whatever it was. A story of the Cadillac Tramps is what I always say because it's not the whole story. There's so much more to it, but it's the story of how how we started, but then also where we ended up after a bunch of crap happened in the middle, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a great documentary. I've seen it a couple times already, so I'm super stoked to see it again. Yeah. This is a documentary that I'll probably end up watching many times over. So you guys did a really good job on it, and we're glad to be here. And uh, any final words? Just, you know what? You can download it. You go to nadianrecordsmedia.com. You can actually... You can get the link for Vimeo if you want to see the film, and eventually we will re release it for digital distribution once Stan tells me what you guys do. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Right on. Right on. Punk Rock Chronicles. Who am I speaking with? Jamie Sims Coakley, director of the Cadillac Tramps music documentary Life on the Edge. Yeah, she's the one. She's the one that actually put this whole thing together. And can you just talk a little bit about the journey getting here and then um, how does it feel to watch this movie on the big screen? Yeah, we started making the film in 2014, so it's almost been 10 years. And uh, we had to cut a sizzle. The guys in the band didn't want me to do it, to be honest. Brian Coakley's wife um, at the time. And so we cut a sizzle together and we had them over to the house and, and showed it to them and they were crying at the end. Nice. Um, and they came around and they were all amazing and wonderful at, at, through the whole thing. But it wasn't easy. You have to really stay tenacious and try and get those interviews. And then seeing it on the big screen uh, is just amazing, you know. Uh, documentary filmmaking is really hard. Storytelling in general is really difficult. Uh, hours, hundreds of hours that people never see behind the scenes to bring a story to life. And uh, to see it in a the theater is insane because you hear everybody laugh together and everybody cry together and uh, the tension and it's just a whole different experience. So what brings you guys out today? We are here to watch the Cadillac Tramps movie, Life on the Edge. Uh, nice. My friend Jamie made this movie about uh, her, her husband Brian and the band Cadillac Tramps and they've been my friends a long, long time and of course I'd be here to support anything that they do. Anything, Paul? Uh, one of the greatest front men ever. Hi. Hi, everybody. How are we doing? Happy Sunday. How's everybody doing? Thank you guys for being here. If you don't know, I'm Jamie Coakley, director of the Cadillac Tramps documentary, and this is Brian Coakley, also producer and uh, star of the Cadillac Tramps documentary. Um, thank you for. Uh, so this is my novel. I just released it, so I figure I should promo it here. And the song that you heard is actually one I just recorded with. Um, some heavy hitters of the punk rock world, although it's not a punk rock song. Um, you heard Frank Agnew of The Adolescents, Warren Renfro, The Cadillac Tramps. 
Derek O'Brien of Social Distortion and Brian Coakley on there as well as me. So um, I hope you liked it. It came out really good. I'm excited. I think it turned out amazing. <laughs> Styles might cry, and then you cry on my chest. <laughs> anyway, um, it's been really cool. We made this movie. We started making this movie ten years ago. Um, in the beginning, the Cadillac Tramps were not on board with the idea of me um, directing <laughs> a documentary about them. At the time, I was Brian's wife, and uh, you know, baggage. But they came around and they ended up being insanely helpful and supportive and we ended up making a really cool documentary I think that um, really captures not only the essence of the band but also the essence of the scene um, and the impact that the Cadillac Tramps had not just as a band but their example of sobriety in the scene and how many people took that to heart and made changes in their lives and went on to live full productive lives knowing that you could be sober and also be a fucking badass part of my friendship anyway sorry brian i just did all the talking yeah, that's okay i just want to say uh johnny warren jamie reedling they wanted to come john they all had family complications and such and uh they want me to tell you hi and uh also that we are in constant you know almost constant touch with uh presley and his mom and you know it's, we're, we're always we're always in the Cadillac Tramps family in the circle and all this stuff. Who knows if we're going to show this movie again uh, next year? We might, we might not. Maybe we'll wait five years next time because it's you know, whatever diminishing returns with all of us, all of us. But we want to share it with whoever wants to. <laughs> <laughs> we want to we want to share it with you guys every year. So if, if if there's a demand for it, we will, and if there isn't, we won't. And, um... I would like to add to that that um, since Gabby passed away, Presley's one fifth of the band. So whatever one fifth of the proceeds that we make off events like this go to Presley every year too. So it's uh, his mom, and is always really happy when we get to cut our check at the end of the year. Yeah, it's nice. It's cool. Um, also, we want to say thank you to the Frida for having us every year. This is a great location. Uh, we love small independent theater. It really brings the heart and soul back to our communities. They are a nonprofit. You can donate and help keep their work going. They, they just scream cool shit all year long. So um, definitely come back and support them. Uh, we want to thank, say thank you to Wahoo's Fish Tacos for presenting us and giving us a shout out on Hiding Frank Morning Show on KLOS on Friday. That was super cool. And Shout out to Jordan who's sitting over there, the producer of the Hiding Frank Show over there. Thank you very much. And can we out? Oh, and then we're going to screen a trailer. Where are the Punk Rock Chronicle guys at? You guys in here? They're, they're standing in the back there. Did you say the title of the film? Where the County Line Ends, oh, yeah. The Evolution of Orange County Punk. Thank you. Anyway, we're going to screen their latest trailer. Um, good work, guys. It's uh, a lot of perseverance and sweat and tears, so kudos. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the Cadillac Tramps. Woo! <laughs> County just in, in our, their own way, I feel like just went way fucking hard in it. What began in the late 1970s as a DIY remedy to curb suburban boredom. He knew maybe two or three other people who even knew what punk rock was. It was basically us and the middle class. When over the years evolved into something much more prolific. I think Orange County had their own type of sound. More than LA. A new sound and style emerged. The Agent Orange adolescence, the yeah. EI sound, social distortion. <laughs> got bad to the point where people didn't want to go anymore and they got stupid by it. That's why the crowd started dwindling. Punk went underground kind of for a while and then took a back seat. And music was just dead for, for several, several years. Like it was kind of thing that it was every day, all day long on MTV where like you go, oh, this is something that's actually going to be big. There was a big signing run. Everybody was getting signed. You know, 94 to 2006, we're a full-time band and that's all we do. Two-day, 
There are young kids. Anyone that's like, oh, dude, it's not the same. Oh, dude, better than Fuck that, dude. They're, right tonight, there's a backyard in East L.A. exploding with five 15-year-old kid bands fucking losing their minds, dude. You know, punk's gonna be all right, dude. It's, it's not gonna end, dude. It's not gonna end.